Hey everyone, how you doing? Um, in this video, I'm going to be quickly going over a game somebody posted on Reddit. Uh, I think the player is rated about 1600, his opponent about the same, forgive me if I'm wrong on that. And basically, it, Reddit's a cool place. Uh, they have like this chess forum, and people are trying to improve in chess, and it's, it's kind of cool, they post fun things. Uh, but it's very tricky today in how to improve, how to analyze your games, because they have these computer engines that are really useful, but you have to know how to use them. Uh, and, and basically the main problem is they'll tell you your move is worse than another move, but you have to ignore it like a decent percentage of the time. I mean, even the top grandmasters make moves that the computer doesn't like, and you have to realize the human... I guess the, what's the word, I can't, I can't think of a good word, but oh, the limitations of the human mind, like, computers will calculate everything instantly. I know what computer recommendations are irrelevant to me, like, they just, I don't need to pay any attention to, but I also know which ones matter. What I'm going to do, though, is basically just very quickly go over the game, look at the notes, and just super fast. Uh, and the point is, like, at my level, the mistakes that matter are the ones that are going to just stand out to me, not to the computer. So, like, if I see a move that's played, I'm like, that doesn't look right. That's the mistake you have to pay attention to, not to, like, what a computer evaluation says. So, knight c6, um, this is the Nimzovich opening. Knight f3 is a good move. d4 is a move, too, but I like knight f3. Uh, if they go e5, it transposes. D4, bishop g4, bishop e2. He writes, I realized later that this wasn't a great move. Bishop b5 is more aggressive. But honestly... Bishop b5 is, is technically probably a better move, but it's not. this move's not so bad. I know in some lines also there's ideas of uh, queen sacrifices, like, like bishop b5. Uh, I don't know if it's good here. It might be. I haven't done any analysis. I'm just, I'm just saying it's something to keep in mind. Like, usually they have to go, sometimes they have to go back to b8 because of that. Uh, I know the main line is something like, like this position, uh, I know there's some variation like this. But I feel like there's a queen check in some... I, I can't really remember exactly, honestly. But it's just something to keep in mind. But I, generally, it's, it's too complicated. I avoid that stuff like the plague because you almost never play against this Nimzovich opening. And so why get involved in some crazy queen sacrifice variation? Just play simple moves. Uh, so, in my, in my opinion, bishop e2, totally fine move. Nothing to really complain about. Bishop b5 is technically better, but not a big deal. Uh, all these moves are normal, developing pieces. d5 is fine in this position. Bishop takes, bishop takes, knight e5. And bishop e2 is completely normal, as was played. You know, keep the bishop and prepare some f4 in the future, perhaps. Knight g6, bishop b5 looks like a great move because of either the king moves or he has to, he has to block with the knight. So, so far, everything's been great. Uh, I see no real problems. Queen g4 looks like a, a totally natural move, too. Uh, he writes that the engine doesn't like this move, but I thought it, it would lead to winning material or a strong position. If the e-pawn moves, black can't castle without dropping the knight. So, like, the point is if e5, uh, you know, he can't castle so easily. I mean, maybe he could go a6. Next move, and then b5 to try to castle that way. Like, let's say we make some random move, a6. You know, maybe maybe black squeeze squirming out of it. Um, I don't know, like, at first glance, what would I recommend instead? I don't know, maybe, maybe take the pawn? I can't, I can't quite figure it out. Like, if we take this, there's always a weakness here. And we have some open lines for our pieces. It somehow, it looks better to me, but he does have moves like c6. I don't know. I mean, this is the main thing I'm concerned about, is just like like e5 here. Kind of blocking the position a little bit for the knights. Two knights against two bishops. You know, you, you'd like to block the position. So, I mean, e5 kind of seems like the best defense. Um, but, you know, this is not, like, your 1600, this is not a critical mistake. This looks like a perfectly normal move at a glance to me, so I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about this too much. Uh, E5 wasn't played. He played instead A6, which, in my mind, is just a mistake. 
Uh, and, and White takes advantage of it pretty well. But he writes that the engine doesn't recommend it, but it's total nonsense, because in this position, White can win a pawn with E takes, uh, sorry, D takes E6, and regardless of what the engine says, almost every good player would just take this extra pawn. Um, and the thing that happens here is, is we get we get this pawn. So, I mean, White is a huge success. I mean, we're up a pawn for nothing, pretty much. Uh, Bishop F6. He writes knight c3, it considered c3 instead, it looked ugly but was probably better. Yeah, this is definitely the first huge mistake of the game for white. Um, everything's been basically fine up to now, you know. But knight c3 is just a, a horrible move after after bishop takes. And, and, and basically, white is up a pawn, but the pawn structure is just completely ridiculous now. The rook is, you know... It, Bearing down on this pawn, the rook's going to come to a4, attacking this pawn, maybe going to c4. Um, the position has just become, you know, from white's better to like, maybe even slightly worse in one move. Uh, and so this is like the move that really was positionally very bad. Uh, c3 is like much, much, much better. And yeah, he, he wrote that it gives a, it takes a, a square away from the knight pretty much, but d4 is a perfectly fine square. Like, if c6... I mean, maybe we could go knight a3 if, if, if we want, but there's nothing wrong with d4. I don't see a problem. It's not like you can win a pawn. So, now our pawn structure is intact, and we're just up a pawn for nothing. And, you know, black has some, you know, somewhat active pieces, but white is just better. So how does one avoid making moves like this? Uh, there's no secret magic bullet, you know? You have to judge a lot. You have to judge and kind of compare a lot of things. You have to compare whether the bishop's more important than the knight, you know, whether the pawn, or whether the bishop's more important than the pawn structure. So, like, he gives up a bishop for a knight, but you, you mess up your pawns. This stuff just takes lots of experience, lots of playing. There's no, like, to me, it's obvious, but there's no rule I can give to say why. You just see enough positions, you learn from them, and after making the same mistake maybe 10 to 20 times in blitz games or whatever, you start to make it less and less, and then you just start to know that it's, it's not good. Uh, in some cases, it will be good. Uh, but just in this case, like, after c3, black has no real targets. Whereas after, after this move, we're going to see what happens. Take, take, rook a6. I mean, I, I prefer rook a4. I don't know... I just, why not attack this pawn? You know, rook a6 doesn't make any sense to me. But uh, It's not a big deal, but it's just like a little weird for me. But so, okay, he played rook a6. Uh, a3. Already the position is unpleasant because he's just going to attack our a pawn. And there's no way... We can't go a3. Like, like if our pawn was on b2 still, we could just play a3. Pawn defended. We don't have to worry about it. Now the pawn is just totally, totally horrible. Uh, he's just going to gang up on it. He wrote, I thought about this move for quite a long time. The problem is knight e5 to c4 looks quite dangerous. I wanted to play f4 to prevent it, but I think that just drops the e-pawn. I mean, the problem now is like... I mean, white's not better anymore, so... The key is to just somehow activate your pieces. I, I don't know exactly how. Like, I'm not so scared that he's going to take the pawn as long as I can just get active pieces in, in, the, in the process. A3, A3 looks perfectly reasonable. I mean, otherwise, Rook A8's coming. And, and I guess his point was if F4, somehow this pawn's, like, terminally weak, which is probably true. Uh, I don't know. What would I do here at a glance? Not so obvious. Not so obvious at all. I mean, maybe F4 anyway. I don't know. I would look at stuff like this just to get some open lines and just try to, like, simplify it to some drawish position. But I mean, the thing is, I'm sure that the hero of this game who was playing white was not thinking about drawing. He was probably like, I'm up a pawn, so I'm supposed to win, but he definitely has no advantage here. Because black's pieces are all perfect and white's are all passive and, and defensive. Uh, rook d1 with the ideas of rook d4. Yeah, it looks pretty normal. c5 looks a little weird to me, but uh, makes a little weakness. I don't, I don't know if it matters or not, but bishop f4 looks pretty logical. That's what he did. All right, f6. Um, let's see. f6. 
Let's see, I just got a, a text message that one of my students drew a 2300. A 2300, who I know is a pretty good player. My student's like 1700, so I'm sure he's very happy about that. Uh, um, all right, sorry, I got distracted. So, what did he do? He took the night off. Um, I guess it looks okay. With the noon so the knight soon to find a great post on c4, I thought it best to exchange. Yeah, you know the thing is if knight c4 now, e5 was a was a good move, trying to like open some lines and I, I think it was at least. It looks pretty logical. So f6 was actually seems like a pretty good move. Um rook a2 is kind of a disgusting move and passive rook. You know, if you're if you're gonna defend with, with this, like you know something's wrong with your position. He's already didn't like it because it seemed so passive, but also seemed necessary to hold the A-pawn. I don't know, I would just be trying to simplify somehow, like, it's not so easy though. I mean, black should just be better here. I can't really figure out what exactly to do. I don't know, I would have to think about it, um, but it's not really a big deal. Rook A2 though, it's like... It's not fun. Yeah, rook a4 to c4 and stuff is just ugly. King c7's somewhat strange, but you know, black can be patient here. White has no idea. I mean, look, the rooks, they're just passively defending, so we have no real plan. White should bring the king in, which he did. Um, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to figure this out. I, I don't know, I would go king e2 here. I mean, he played a4, but... He, and he wrote the idea was to give the rook some some difficulties after it takes the pawn and threatening to trap it. I don't know where we're threatening to trap it exactly. I mean, I mean the thing is, I would go, I would do this just because I think we gained some time here. And now a4 maybe. I mean the position actually looks okay now. Uh, the rook, like, because the king is in the game. I mean, I don't see why we're much worse here anymore. But we, I think we were before. I mean, king activity is like number one to me right now. That's why I would just bring the king in without trying to do anything else, really. But I mean, I guess this is okay, too. And it looks like it kind of transposed, so that's cool. Um, A5. I mean, probably the position's about even now. I don't know exactly how it happened, but it did. You know, G3, a big mistake, I think? Why would that be a big mistake? I have no idea. <laughs> I realized after I played this that I really needed to play H4 instead. Now G5 shuts down any ideas on the king side. A uh, big mistake seems strong. Like, H4... I don't know, man. <laughs> uh, G3, G5, opponent offered a draw here. I mean... Both of our rooks are defending, so... You know, we can never, we can't do much. So, I mean, I, I you know, the, the downside though is his rook is trapped. So, it's interesting. Some other position got worse. I don't know, for him, it got worse. I don't know what the hell happened here. So, I didn't look at this game so closely, so I'm just kind of curious. First instinct was uh, this wasn't the best move, but maybe, you know, probably it is a mistake. <coughs> was like going for this rook c4 thing to begin with. I, I don't know what you should do instead, but maybe just like king c6, b5, you know, like, like c4. All right, it's because the thing our rooks are tied down, right? So like, I'm not sure exactly what I'm accomplishing here is the problem. But I mean, it's just like white's totally tied down. I don't like the the way he got his rook stuck in this bad square. Just doesn't look like the best thing to me. I don't know, I lost the game. Where to go? Took this. I mean, yeah, this seems like a good idea. Oh, he should probably go rook d. Yeah, he should go rook d4 first. Because if the king comes here, then c3 is not. Well, not c3 is not even a move, but um, somehow the 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 rook on b4 or b5 or wherever it ended up wasn't wasn't the best square. So 
probably would have done this instead. But you know, I mean, I think the position's all right now for for white. <clears throat> all right, so all this stuff happened. Key three. I mean, I don't know. He wrote it's a big mistake. I'm. I'm not so, like, you know, for somebody raised 1600, I would never call g3 a big mistake. The big mistake this game was knight c3. Everything else is, like, minor uh, compared to that. Uh, but it's hard to, to understand that from just running a game through a computer, because the computer's going to dislike other moves, you know? But knight c3 is the move that, like, a master level player is going to be like, this move is horrible. Every other move, it's like, you have to think. I'm not, like, 100% sure. But you want to find those moves where it's just, like, the much stronger player looks at it and wants to throw up. Those are the moves that you really need to fix. The other ones in this game that, you know, I, I didn't see any big issues. Um, all right, king d3. I mean, this move looks a little odd to me. I guess I guess he's thinking he can't do much else, but the king's on the best square right now, so I wouldn't, like, want to voluntarily move it backwards. I don't know, maybe h4 or something. I just, uh, you know, I wouldn't want to go king d3. I'd rather go almost anywhere else. I mean, it doesn't matter that much, probably, but a king's very nice on d on, on c4. So, like, now that we, when we trade these rooks off, our king is less actively posted. Um, rook 8, 1 to a6, he wrote, the computer says this is a bad move and should just king c4 instead, which I don't understand. Well, I mean, the king's better on c4. That's what... It, the position's being simplified, you need your king to be active. That's more important than anything, which is why I never wanted to go king d3 in the first place. Um, because now, like, if he takes, I mean, every he can't trade rooks. Take, take, king d5, followed by king e6. You know, it's, it's, you don't even have to calculate it, though. The king belongs in c4 because it's active. <laughs> the king wants to be active. It wants to go towards that d5 square. That's all that really, really matters here. Um... Still, rook a1 to a6 is like a pretty tempting move, but it, the, you know, and bringing the king back from c4 is like a little weird. But what you're gonna do? But okay, rook a1 to a6. Yeah, no, like the king of pawn in game, it just, it just isn't winning. It looks like it might be because our, our our king is active, but it's not. I, by the way, I would probably do this. Try to like infiltrate behind the uh, pawns. You know, white should still have some maybe maybe small advantage here. Or although maybe I'm being overly optimistic. Perhaps a move like rook, rook f7, and then try to infiltrate with our king is is fine for black. Huh. I wasn't expecting this video to be so long. I just I get I get curious about things. Yeah, but I mean, whoa, king e3 is strange. Oh, but I guess we can't. Yeah, I mean, if a king was in c4, all these positions would be winning, which is why when he wrote he didn't understand it, that's the point. If we could go king d5 here, we win. So all of these rook trades just win because of our active king. And just never never forget how important the active king is in the endgame. Um, c4 locks it up pretty much. I mean, it should, should be some kind of draw here. Okay, g4 is obvious draw, and everything's totally locked up. But, I mean, it's probably a draw anyway. Somehow this game continues. Oh, now it's over. All right, so that's the end of the game. I'd say two lessons. Um, because, you know, again, you look at the computer, it tells you, like, if you're rated 1600, it's going to tell you, like, 10 of your moves are horrible. Um, like, almost always. And you have... It's very hard to know which ones to ignore, which ones are actually important. Two things are important. Number one, that knight c3 move was just bad and ugly and just gave black all these targets and active lines for his rook that were just... You know, changed the evaluation of the position in one move. From like white's better to white's slightly worse, I'd say, even to slightly worse. Uh, the a second one was active king in the end game. Like it's really important. Um, there's no reason to be like moving your king backwards. And you could see every time I was analyzing it, the first thing I was thinking was, let's get our king active. So the key was that king c4 move. Um, that explains why the computer liked king c4 because the king is more active there, going towards the d5 square and. It gives white some some opportunities, but overall, you know, solid game. It was nothing, you know. White's moves were not. There's no tactical oversights or anything like that. Um, 
The main thing was that, that knight c3 move, it just ruins your position and the active king in the endgame. Alright, uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.